So there's this vanilla ice cream dessert I really enjoy, especially during the summertime. And it is called a banana foster. And the banana foster apparently comes from Louisiana and made by this famous chef whose name I don't recall right now. But what it is, is really you use fried bananas, you have vanilla ice cream, and then you drizzle butterscotch over it. Looks pretty tempting. Now, I was wondering, it's a really nice summer dessert. So I want to capture this dessert in a cake format. And it will be gluten-free and so delicious that it fools everybody to think it's the real deal. And what I figured I need for that is I need a vanilla flavor. So I'm thinking vanilla pastry cream would do it. It's stiff enough to be sitting between the different cake layers. And then I can use banana sponge cake and I figured that recipe already out. And then I just need butterscotch. That seems straightforward. There's one thing though I'm not quite sure about how I'm going to do that yet. If I want to have the butterscotch over the cake and at the same time look very presentable, I need something between the cake and the butterscotch. Otherwise you will see this cake, some oozing out pastry cream and, uh, and butterscotch over it, which will look pretty much like a blob. And I don't like blob looking cakes. So I figured out what I could do as a solution is I'm gonna do a whipped cream mousse. That would look very beautiful and nice. So I'm gonna get started on it. And we already know how to make the banana sponge cake and you can see that in the last week's episode. So now I have to do the pastry cream, the whipped cream and the butterscotch. And then I have to combine them and then I have my banana foster cake. So for my banana foster cream cake, I'm gonna make the vanilla pastry cream. And for that, I'm gonna start with heating up the milk. And we have this really beautiful milk from Mossville Organic, which is a local farm. And this milk is so good. That will be such a nice cake. It's really good milk. I'm gonna have some. But unfortunately, I left the cups inside. Um, I could just drink that by the gallons. I'm gonna warm up the milk. And in the meantime, I'm going to combine the egg yolk with the cornstarch, which is the base of pastry cream, really. So I had this egg yolk still left over from when I made the Nutella sponge cake. I'm going to add three tablespoons of cornstarch. Yes, you can substitute the cornstarch with the tapioca or potato starch, but you do need to check on the conversion. It's not one to one. I'm also going to add now 150 grams of sugar. And unfortunately, I ran out of sugar, but I have plenty of powdered sugar, so I'm gonna use powdered sugar instead. In general, you wanna use 150 grams of sugar. And you wanna add a little bit of salt. You're gonna mix the egg yolk and the sugar and the cornstarch. When the milk is slightly warmed up, you're gonna add the milk and start mixing it. And then I'm gonna pour the mixture back into the pot and under medium heat, I'm gonna heat up this mixture until the egg yolk and the milk create like a thick pudding like texture. You do not want to get it to a boiling point because then the mixture falls apart. I'm actually going to add one and a half tablespoon of vanilla extract and I can feel now how it thickens up. It feels like a thick pudding now and now I'm going to move it off the stove. So the pastry cream normally has some clumps in it so I normally strain it with a side pot. I did find something very cool in Germany, which I think they use for a compote. So you can pour the vanilla cream in and then it moves the cream around for you. So here is the vanilla, which is the filling for the cake. I'm going to let it cool down though and wait certainly till my cake is cooled down as well before I'm going to start assembling it. I want to have a butterscotch sauce on the top of the cake. For that, I need to make a butterscotch. And I'm gonna measure 150 grams of dark brown sugar, which is about roughly three quarters cup. The recipe is telling me I have to melt first the butter. So the butter is melted, and now I'm gonna add the dark brown sugar. And I want to get this to a boiling point. So what I'm working on right now is really trying to get the dark brown sugar to dissolve in the butter. You see how it's now starting to look less grainy? I'm gonna add now half a cup, which is about 120 milliliters of heavy cream to the dark brown sugar. And I'm gonna cook it in for another three, four minutes. I wanna also add like a quarter teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna add now one tablespoon of dark rum. It smells good. I wanna taste it, but sugar can get very hot. So I'm gonna wait a little bit. Mm. Oh yeah. I think it needs a little bit of vanilla. So I'm gonna add half a teaspoon to it. So I'm gonna use that later. For now, I'm gonna transfer the butterscotch to this container. 
While I'm waiting for the butterscotch to cool down, I'm going to start to prepare the heavy whipped cream topping. In my black forest cake, I show you why it is important to have gelatin and what it really does for whipped cream. The first thing I want to do is soak the gelatin for the heavy cream. To prep the gelatin, I'm going to measure a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of water, putting around three gram or half a package of the Dr. Oetker gelatin. I'm going to set the gelatin to the side now and let the water get absorbed by the gelatin. In the meantime, I'm going to cut the different layers of my banana sponge cake. And I really like to doing that with, with having a cake turntable because it definitely helps with making the cake layers. And what I do really is I score first the cake layer, then I put my knife in it and can cut the different cake layers. Here are my different cake layers. To assemble the cake, I normally place the cake on a paper cake bottom, but in this case, I'm going to use my tart form bottom because I don't have to transport it anywhere. I'm going to also bring out now my chilled pastry cream and I need to divide it by three to make sure that each of my three cake layers get enough pastry cream. I'm going to put my second layer on. I can have about two scoops of pastry cream. And now I'm going to put the rest of the pastry cream. I'm going to try to level the cake off as much as possible. With that, I'm normally trying to lock my elbow, my sides. And now I'm going to add the last cake layer on it. Now, it doesn't look that impressive right now. Totally get it. Now I want to add my whipped cream layer on it to make it look very nice and elegant. So I'm going to get back to my gelatin. Gelatin looks pretty good. It's pretty dissolved. I don't see major clumps. So the gelatin absorbed all the water and now what I'm going to do is just dissolve the gelatin. And what I do for that is I'm just going to heat it quick up, but I don't want to get it to a boiling point. When the gelatin is completely dissolved, I put it aside and let it cool down at least to room temperature. When it reached room temperature, I'm going to add about a quarter cup of heavy cream to the gelatin to lower the temperature even more. And then I'm going to set it aside while I'm starting to whip the heavy cream. So I'm going to whip 500 milliliters of heavy cream, which is about two cups. And since the filling is pretty sweet already, I'm just going to add a quarter cup, which is around 50 grams of powdered sugar. It's now not even to a soft peak. It is liquid, but a little bit thicker. And that's what I'm looking for because I'm going to pour the cream. I'm going to add now the gelatin to the soft peak heavy cream. So what I'm looking for is for the heavy cream to be thick so I can still pour it but not any more liquid. It should be the consistency of a heavy syrup. Before I can pour the heavy cream, I need to prep the cake. And I put a cake ring around it, and now I'm gonna just pour the heavy cream over it. I'm gonna try to first get some of the creases filled in, and I'm gonna smoothen it out to balance it a bit. I'm gonna hold it a little bit and shake it for the cream to settle a bit more evenly. Now I'm gonna wait for an hour, probably less, for the heavy cream to set with the gelatin, and then I'm gonna pour over my butterscotch. So the cream is pretty much set. And it took just 20 minutes, but it really depends on the outside temperature and how cold the cream is, how fast it's gonna set. So I'm gonna use my cake spatula. I'm gonna slide carefully on the side of the cake to release it from the form. The longer the whipped cream sits, the harder it will get. So I'm gonna transfer it to this clean wood board and I'm gonna pour now butterscotch all over it. And here's the finished product. So here's my banana foster cream cake. And let's see if this experiment turned out as nice as my Nutella banana sponge cake recipe. Mm -hmm. I mean, this cake just has it all. The only thing what I would improve on this recipe is having more butterscotch. Now, I do have some left over, so I'm going to drizzle more butterscotch on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now this is perfection. Now I get this strong butterscotch taste with it, the vanilla, the heavy cream and the banana flavor all in one bite. So the banana foster cream cake is definitely a success. I definitely think it's a must have on your cream cake recipe list. If you enjoyed this video and would like to learn more about different gluten-free recipes, please subscribe to the channel and check the bell to get notifications about any upcoming videos. And if you have any comments, feedback, thoughts, please add them below into the comment section. And I see you next week. Bye.